what you think when this is not professional, it's not what I taught you. I don't you. care about what professional and what's safe. I'm doing this my way. That is your way? Yeah. We love you, Catalea. Then watch my back until it's done. So I gotta say, I, as an action fan, the idea that you've worked now with both James Cameron and as part of the Luc Besson factory, you've done it all. It feels like these are two of the real big names in action. A, a big names to check off my bucket list, and I feel so blessed. And um, and as a woman, I, I, I it was a dream come true because these were these were filmmakers that I knew about their iconic female characters, and I knew about their stories way before I knew uh, them. That mm -hmm. they were behind them, you know. I, I, from Sarah Connor to Ellen Ripley to Nikita, Matilda, and Lilo. Oh, yeah. They, these were characters I was completely in love with. Not just because they were physically stealth, but because internally they were so compromised. They were like weeping little willows that lived in constant sorrow because of the things that were taken from her. So that said, there was an androgyny to these characters. Mm -hmm. Having an athletic background, I love, I love physically incorporating my ability in a character, and I've, I've always gravitated towards action movies movies and science fiction because uh, the stories are overwhelmingly uh, um, heartfelt, but they're they're physically enchanting, you know? Particularly the films that Besson writes, um, he does write really damaged characters. These are people that have been wounded by life and literally seem to have one thing that they want. Exactly. And it, it really, it becomes interesting for you as an actor then to find the way to um, give them grace notes and give them little glimpses of the inner life that they might have had. It was important for us to um, to see her play these different characters when she's when she's like on you know working, but as soon as she comes home, um, the silence because she lives in constant solitude and the fact that we really you know by seeing her with the least amount of clothing possible, it wasn't because we wanted it to be gratuitous. It was because we really wanted to see her in her raw form. And when she's alone, her emotions were naked. They were just out there and there was nothing she could do. She was a slave to her broken heart. And that was what attracted me the most about this character. I'd never done a character that was so broken on the inside and so conflicted. I just sat down with um, Sam last week for The Debt and we talked a little bit about him returning to characters for the first time because he just re he, did, he did The Wrath of the Titans yeah. and he started talking to Jim a little bit about uh, returning to Avatar. Playing characters a second time, offers you a very different opportunity because you've got that, that history with them now. Are you excited about returning to Neytiri? Very, very excited. It seems like what an amazing opportunity to come back to now because we've laid all that groundwork. I'm excited and, and the perfectionist in me is, is also fearful. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that everything that I did, all the training that I did to, to sort of along with Jim to conceive her, to bring her to life, I want to do the same thing because um, I don't, I don't want to miss a beat and, and, and take her in a different direction. Right. I want her to follow her own journey, so I am eager to go back to that. Well, it was very nice to finally uh, sit down with you and look forward to uh, that and the new Star Trek as well. Thank you so take much. Take care, Thank miss. You.